What is going on everybody out there in YouTube land? So in this video we're going to do something a little bit different and we're going to talk about animals that live in water. G'day, I'm Luke and I'm an avid reptile and amphibian keeper. On my channel, you'll see heaps of DIY tutorials, enclosure builds, herping clips, and loads more to do with animals. I hope you subscribe for some more animal-related content. So as some of you guys may or may not be aware, aquariums were actually my first driving hobby as far as pets and things are concerned. And uh, whilst the reptiles make up well, let's face it, probably 99% of my uh, my time and my devotion. I still have a thing for, for fish. So I'm right into my reef aquariums and I absolutely love it. And uh, sometimes people think it's a little bit harder to keep these kind of animals than what it actually is. So I'm just here to make a little video. I'm gonna set up a new little reef tank, a little Pico tank. So something really tiny, about 20 liters. And uh, we're gonna set this up stage by stage over a course of a couple of videos, most likely. And we're going to show you how easy it is to actually keep some of these animals going. So something to take into consideration when you're talking about reef aquariums in particular is size does matter, right? So if you can, bigger is always better. Bigger tends to be a bit easier to keep. Um, I know when I'm at work, it kind of sounds like a bit of a sales pitch, you know, buy a bigger tank, it's going to make your life easier. It, it is actually true. Um, so sometimes starting with smaller aquariums, they can be a little bit more unstable. So little things like your water parameters or salinity and things can get a little bit skew if and, you know, sometimes animals can suffer from, you know, some negligence there. So I'm going to show you a few little tips. We're going to set up a 20 litre tank and, uh, you know, I'm going to go over some of the basics of uh, keeping animals in. Aquarium chiller just kicked in. So that's one thing about aquariums especially reef aquariums, when you're talking about some pretty sensitive corals, is you do actually need to uh, keep them somewhat cool. So I'm gonna go over some pretty basic kind of care of little tiny tanks and things like that. So some things that you need to take into consideration, of course, and uh, we're gonna dive right in. We're gonna set up this really simple little reef tank. It is gonna be basic, so I'm not talking about really high dollar figure, uh, you know, items and things that go into it. I'm gonna go over it and just kind of keep it super, super simple and kind of show you some of my ways from keeping these things, you know, nice and clean and looked after. So first things first, if you haven't already, you can see this tank behind me. This is my biggest tank. It's 180 liters for the actual display volume and it's probably about 40 liters or so for the sump volume that's inside the cabinetry. There are some fish in there that are getting a little bit big and don't worry, don't criticize me. I do work in an aquarium, so when the time comes, they'll go back to there into one of our displays or off to another customer's display. So this is one of my two reef tanks. I do have another one. It is a mangrove and macroalgae dominated tank per se. Um, and you know, that, that's kind of just got a couple of specialty fish in there, you know, a couple of really easy to look after animals. And this one's kind of like a bit more of my uh, high tech tank, should we say. So in this aquarium here, if you don't know, there are a lot of SPS corals that are growing along the top and we've got a lot of soft and LPS corals down the bottom So it's a bit of a mixed reef tank in my mangrove tank. It's more likely your soft corals and LPS uh, But there's no SPS involved in that whatsoever This little Pico tank that we're going to set up. So this 20 21 litre tank We're going to probably just do mainly softies maybe a couple of pieces of LPS But we want to just keep it nice and easy for those guys out there that just want to have something that's small easy to look after you know, nothing too crazy, but you still get that little bit of an awesome saltwater aquarium at home. So this right here, this is my mangrove tank. There's a few little bits of calerpa and different types of macroalgae and things growing in here as well. But as you can see, it's predominantly soft corals. We've got a couple of pieces of LPS coral, a large polyp stony coral in there as well. I've only got three, actually no, I've got four fish in this tank, so it's a little bit overcrowded. But I do have one little lionfish, one clarky clownfish, I've actually got a, I believe it's a Fiji damsel. I could be wrong on that one. Um, and I do have somewhere in there as well, a really tiny little green file fish as well. So as I said, this one does have mangroves in it. I'll quickly pan up now to give you a bit of a look. There's my little mangroves growing out of the top there. So mangroves have only just become accessible again in Australia recently. And one day I actually plan to plumb this system into 
uh, my big existing reef tank and kind of have them both joined up to the one filtration system. But for now, we're going to set up another tank. And I'm going to set it up in this space next to this tank here. And we're going to use that little fluval edge as our shell. So that's right, I didn't misspeak then. I did actually say that this was a fluval edge. And at one point in time, it was. I took the liberty of taking a razor blade to the top of it and cutting out the top panel. Uh, just because I really like the actual dimensions of the tank minus the top panel. And this has been set up as a little reef aquarium before. It was actually my first mangrove tank for when I just had one mangrove. So I've just taken it out of the storage unit and decided to reset it up. I did have some freshwater fish in this kind of position here on the desk in the bedroom um, recently. But uh, you know what? I, I just want to keep it to the one type of animal. And let, let's just stay with the saltwater hobby for now. So as I said, we're going to use this as a bit of a shell. And we're going to set this up into a really easy little pico reef. So when it's setting up any aquarium, especially something that has to have a little bit of warm water, there's a couple of types of things that you need to take into consideration. One is filtration, and the second is some heating. So I'm actually pretty lucky. Uh, I found this little filter kicking around at work at high tech. And this is an awesome little Pisces filter. It's a little internal filter. Um, I haven't personally actually used these guys before, but I have used a lot of similar type ones. But the thing that I actually like about this one is it doesn't just have one little nozzle off the side of it here for a bit of water flow. It's actually got this long lip. So hopefully we can get a good amount of surface tension, a little bit of surface agitation rather, uh, from this nice little spout coming out of the top here. Something else I do like about it as well is it's got a little access hole up the top here. So once you lift up the lid, we can actually pop our heater inside of here and put the lid back on and it's all inside the filter nice and neat and it's just one little less thing that can kind of cramp up some space inside the actual aquarium itself so as far as heating goes that's just a little aqua 125 watt nano heater uh, it's going to be plenty for this little 21 litre tank or 20 litre tank um, and yeah it kind of is just going to be hanging right on the back wall i'm going to set it up like a little bit of a peninsula so we're only going to have a short face facing out from the uh the desk there um, but yeah, I think this is going to be plenty of filtration and uh, for now, I'm just going to run the actual carbon pouches that the filter came with. So it's got some little carbon pouches there and I'm probably just going to run some simple filter floss inside of it as well, just so we can make sure we clean up the water nice and good. Apart from that, I might put some pre-cycled media from my other tanks inside of the back chamber here, just so we don't really have to cycle the tank per se. Um, and that'll just kind of give me a quick step and right into the right direction of getting this thing set up, you know, quicker than most little tanks. So I'm kind of lucky in that circumstance that having these other reef tanks here, I do have some media in the bottom of the sumps on both of these systems as well. So I can transfer a little bit of that into this new system with all that good beneficial bacteria that's going to help break down nasties like ammonia and nitrite and uh, convert them over into nitrate. So most little reef tanks in particular, you, you do want to kind of just watch out and hopefully not hit any sort of ammonia or nitrite issues. So this system here, because I do already have so much existing things, I am going to be able to set it up essentially and, you know, completely almost have it fully fledged within a week or so. Um, whereas, you know, if you are doing this at home, maybe just take it a little bit slower, give it a few weeks to kind of just run it in, make sure you're not seeing any ammonia or nitrite present, and then you can start really adding some fish and corals and things to the system. So for today's video, I'm pretty much just going to install the heater, the filter, um, some sand, a little bit of live rock, and probably call it a day. Just because I've already ordered a new light for the system, I am waiting for that to come, so I'll probably wait until I've actually got the light in the tank before I actually start adding any corals or anything into there. So without any further ado, I'm gonna get setting this up. This should be a little bit of fun for an afternoon on here on a Monday. And uh, yeah, stay tuned, come along for the ride. So as I said, guys, I am gonna set this tank up as like a little peninsula tank. So instead of having it a bit more landscape oriented, I'm gonna have it facing around this way. So I get a little bit more front to back depth. First thing I'm going to do is actually put in some sand. This is just some uh, Serenity coral sand, just repackaged into another bag. We're going to put a little bit of this in. I'm not going to go too nuts on the sand. I don't really think that these days you need to have like a really big deep sand bed. So we're just going to put a bit of this in and see how it looks. As I said, I didn't want to go too mental on a sand bed, but there's probably about a centimetre and a half across the bottom of that, so that'll do us for this one. 
It's mainly in case I put anything small in here that actually does enjoy a sand bed, like any particular snails or, or crabs or potentially a fish. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to set this up with livestock wise, but it's not a bad little start anyway. So as far as the filtration and the heating goes, we are just using this little Pisces internal filter. It's a nice little guy. I think I'm just going to run it just with the suction cups. So this little filter does come with like a little hang on bracket. So whether you want to use the suction cups or just the bracket, totally up to you. I'm probably just going to leave the bracket off for this one. I am missing the little top. So I do need to put this back into place. That's why we're going to fill it up. And I will put some of that media inside of that back chamber there, as well as a little bit of filter floss, because as I pour all the water into this tank, good chances are is I'm going to stir up a little bit of the the sand and a bit of dust out of it. So this will just help pick that up and clean it up nice and quick. So in my hands, I have a couple of mass spec bio balls. These little things are good enough for holding about 70 litres worth of bacteria per ball. So enough bacteria to, to be able to be beneficial for a 70 litre tank. So there's gonna be enough beneficial bacteria on these for a tank up to about 140 litres. And as I said, this is only a 20 litre tank, so plenty of good stuff involved in those. So apart from that, I'm just going to whack that little filter floss in the top there just to help clean up any of that, that garbage we're about to stir up in this tank and I'll put that back on. Alright, next step we're going to add in a little bit of live rock and then quickly get some water inside of this tank. So what is live rock I hear you say? Well, live rock is essentially rock that has been pre-cycled or it's come out of the actual ocean itself and it's going to contain a lot of that beneficial bacteria, potentially a little bit of uh, other critters and things like that along with it, things like copepods and amphipods and things like that. And uh, eventually in your systems, your rock's actually going to turn alive with all this beneficial bacteria and all these other little critters. But for some time now, I've had a couple of pieces of live rock kicking around inside of this little refugium section inside of my main saltwater tank sump. I need to clean that skimmer cup out. Oh, that's looking filthy. Uh, so I'm going to take a few of these little bits of rock. We're going to take it over to this other tank set them up in a little little scape and then uh, get some water into it and hopefully this will bring a whole bunch of that beneficial bacteria and a few little critters and stuff to get this tank started. Here's our first little piece of rock. It's only going to be a very small scape inside of this tank. Okay, so I've got a few other little bits of rock here as well that I want to use. I think I want to prop this little one up towards the back. Give it a bit of height. And just keep this simple. I want there to be plenty of room in there for corals. I don't want to go too nuts on the rock. I want there to be plenty of room for the filter to be able to actually filter all the water around inside the tank. So I believe this is actually going to be enough. I'm pretty happy with that layout as it is too. So anyway, we could always readjust it down the line. Next step, I need to actually go and get some water into this tank. Let there be water. Yeah, guys we've got it all together last thing I need to do is actually chuck the heater and the filter on and uh, that didn't actually turn out as murky as what I was thinking that the sand might do so there you go not too bad at all little filters running it's a little hard out it's nice and clear in the water already not too bad at all so the last thing I need to do today then added a little lid to it just to stop a bit of the evaporation because these small tanks they can cause quite a bit of an evaporation and the last thing we want to be able to do is you know be topping this up every every few hours um, so yeah I've gone ahead I've created a bit of a glass lid for this guy get rid of some of these starting bubbles out here 
This is just going to be a nice little low flow tank, as I said, like nothing crazy whatsoever. I'm actually thinking about pretty much just putting across these little uh, reductuses and discosoma, these little like mushroom corals, little uh, little morphs. There's a few little varieties in there and I reckon I'm just going to put those all over into here and make it a little bit of a mushroom and anemone tank. But uh, yeah, maybe that, maybe one little soft coral or something on that, that main bommy up the back, but we're just going to keep this pretty damn simple so yeah as I said let's go and whack this little lid on this is going to help stop the evaporation before the automatic top off comes and keep it all nice and controlled a nice little clarky clownfish over in this tank she likes to think that that elegance coral is actually an enemy and she she feeds it little bits of food and stuff it's quite cool so as I said guys the last thing this little tank needs is actually just a little little glass lid and I've just cut one perfectly to size to stretch across this little tank. And just push that filter down a little. And this can just sit nice and snug. There's a little feeding hole up on this side here. And there's a little gap down the back here, but that's just so all my cords and bits and pieces can attach into there. And uh, also I'll be getting that new light unit soon, so that'll have to attach onto the back there as well. This is a good little start for a little Pico Reef. And uh, yeah, we're going to see how this guy goes over the next next few weeks. And you guys can come along with me and help set it up. Drop a comment below if you, you think what sort of livestock we should put in there. I'm not going to go nuts. You know, maybe one fish or ornamental shrimp or something like that. But give me your suggestion on what you reckon I should put in here. And uh, yeah, I'll take it on board and see where we can go from there. So there's just a bit of a better look at the top of the... A glass there. I just I didn't want any brackets or anything on it. I just wanted it to be kind of nice and sleek and and match in. You know, make it a little bit more like it once was with being the the fluval edge and all. So I reckon this would be quite cool. There's a nice little cave underneath there. So if I do put a fish in there or a shrimp, it can be a little hideout. A nice little bommy in front as well. Another reason that on a little Pico Reef or a little small reef like this that you want the, a glass lid on top is not only does it keep fish in, but it'll actually keep your water in the tank too. So for those of you who don't know, if salt water actually starts evaporating from your tank, the salt itself isn't going to leave the water. So the tank eventually becomes saltier and saltier and saltier. And when you top it off with fresh RODI water, then that's what kind of stabilizes the salinity. So having a lid like this just prevents a little bit of that evaporation. So hopefully it should keep it a little bit more stable a little bit longer. So as I said guys, you know, make sure to follow along, subscribe to the channel if you like this sort of content. And uh, you know, we're going to be bringing out another couple of parts here of setting up this little Pico Reef. I reckon this should be a fun little project, um, especially while a lot of people are bored or in lockdown or you know, whatever you're doing around the world, you know, it's all troubling times ahead. So might as well bring a little bit of joy and and fun into home and what better way to do it than a little tiny pico reef so you know this might give a few of you reptile guys out there a little bit of an idea of something else you want to do if you wanted to do a little project or you ever considered getting into into aquariums and things like that this could be a good little good little stepping stone into a bit of a hobby like this so make sure to subscribe to the channel make sure that you uh drop a like on the video give it a comment if you wish to remember to let me know what sort of livestock you want to see in this little thing here um, nice little low flow environment i'm not doing anything too mental so you know just take that into consideration we want this to be nice and easy and hopefully i'll see you guys on the next video